Welcome good people, my name is Joel Collier and today we're going to talk about how to determine if your data is non-normal in AMOS, the Structural Equation Modeling Software Program. So one of the fundamental assumptions uh, of AMOS is that your data is normally distributed. Um, and so before we kind of jump into determining if your data is actually non-normal in AMOS, I thought it would be a good idea just to real briefly talk about what does it mean to be non-normal uh, from a data perspective. So from a normality, um, when you're talking about your data is normally distributed, well really what does that mean? Well for the most part it means that you're, you're, uh, you have this kind of a bell-shaped curve of your data where for the most part it's kind of symmetric, you know, where the mean in the middle is kind of has two sides that's somewhat kind of equal, where kind of most of the observations or the bulk of them, if you will, kind of cluster around that kind of center peak. And then really for the most part, any kind of values um, that kind of move away from that peak kind of taper off somewhat kind of uh, equally on both sides, but then they slowly kind of uh, gradually progress down to not seeing observations in the uh, the far out kind of extremes. And, and we're all somewhat kind of familiar with um, uh, the, the normal distribution bell curve, but what does it mean for it to be non-normal? Well, really you're talking about kind of two things. Is there kurtosis and is there skew in your data? So from a kurtosis perspective, it's really talking about the, the peakedness uh, if, of your data. So if you really have something that's really what we'd call kind of positive kurtosis, it means it's really steep um, and that you don't really see that much maybe on the ends of the distribution, but there's lots, a uh, lot more kind of congre uh, congregating around maybe even a central uh, value. So even if you were saying it was on like a one to seven scale, it may be like, well, five has the vast majority of, of the answers and you might see some really kind of positive kurtosis there, meaning that it's really steep and very, uh, has a very sharp peak uh, to the distribution. A negative kurtosis really means that it's more kind of mound-like, uh, so it's the opposite of it. It doesn't have a sharp peak at all. And if anything, it, it, the distribution is really more spread out than normal. The other one that you can uh, think about is really skew. Uh, so skew really kind of falls into two areas too, which is does your data kind of skew uh, to one direction or the other? They talk this, about this in kind of positive skew and negative skew, where for the most part your kind of positive skew if you think about it, your long tail really kind of takes place to kind of the right of the distribution where your mode, uh, actually your mean, and uh, actually has a greater value than your mode does. Uh, and on the flip side, a negative skewness is where that kind of that long tail now kind of points to the left. And you have probably far more values in the mode that are greater than the actual even mean. And so that's when we're talking about uh, normal distribution is does your distribution have some skew and does it have some kurtosis? Uh, and how do I determine, the, determine this in, uh, in Amos? And, and so, you know, one of the things that I guess the issue with uh, normal distribution is even for a lot of social science researchers, they were like, mm, I don't always really love the idea of normal distribution because I really want my respondents to be very adamant and strong about their opinions and so if I have a little skew sometimes and maybe even a little kurtosis that's kind of what I want right because I want you know significance but you don't want your data to uh, be so skewed or so kurtotic uh, that you know that it's really going to cause an, an issue with uh, the interpretation too. So let's jump into Amos here and kind of show you how uh, to assess this in uh, a simple kind of model here. So I've got a CFA model here, confirmatory factor mo uh, analysis model up here, and I've got three constructs. Uh, it's adaptive behavior, uh, customer delight, and there's a uh, another third one called positive word of mouth. So I'm trying to determine uh, its impact. And so um, Amos does this in a way that's pretty easy for you to assess. So if we go into the analyze properties uh, options and we go into the output there is a a checkbox that simply says test for normality and outliers right and that's really what we want to check 
Uh, and so once we do that and we run our analysis uh, of our CFA, uh, it'll take just a second for it to actually run, uh, and then we can go into our text output, and I'll show you exactly where Amos will give you the assessment uh, of your norm normality. So in the output, you will see a link on the left-hand side that says assessment of normality. So if we click into that, right now it's going to give you uh, the min and the max. So for each one of my measurement properties, so you can see these are all observables. There's no unobservables here. It's just it's assessing the normality of the observables that's in your data. It'll give you the min and max of each one of those values, and then it gives you a skew value and then also a kurtosis value too. So for skew, and this is based on Arbuckle, um, it says that if skew uh, falls within kind of a positive 2 to a negative 2, so if it falls within that territory, it's considered you know an acceptable range and that, that you're not going to see your data fall into what they would consider a non-normal uh, kind of distribution, uh, the skew to that effect, if you will, is not extreme, but it's going to be problematic. And you can see in this uh, data right here, I've got some slightly uh, negative skew uh, going on here, but none of it exceeds 2, so we can still say within that those properties that it's still not going to be problematic. Now in kurtosis, um, again this is based on Arbuckle, you know, he says that you know, it's a a pretty pretty big range. It's actually a positive 10 to a minus 10. So if those values fall within that, you're you're assumed to have kind of an acceptable level of uh, kurtosis that doesn't really kind of push it into the non-normality range. And so you can see in each one of these that I've uh, I've got that they definitely fall within uh, plus 10 to minus 10. So if it kind of falls, you know, without outside that, you know, maybe you've got something that's really uh, has a high degree of kurtosis, or maybe there's an extreme amount of skew, um, then you're really looking at assessing your data as being kind of non-normal. So what do I do if my data is kind of non-normal? Uh, well, I've got another video. Uh, out there that really says, well, how do I assess my uh, data if it, I have non-normal? So look for that kind of part two, and it goes into detail of what to do, because you're going to use kind of a bootstrapping technique to somewhat kind of normalize the data. Um, but that's it for uh, for this video. Uh, if you saw value in the video, I would ask that you uh, like and subscribe. And if you're looking for more information about structural equation modeling and how to assess non-normality and even how to analyze data in non-normal and just general structural equation modeling uh, as a whole. I'd encourage you to check out my book called Applied Structural Equation Modeling um, using Amos and I'm going to put a link down in the description. Uh, and as always, uh, I hope you all have a great day, good people.